welcome back to the ADHD Friendly Podcast. I'm Patty Blinderman. I'm an ADHD and executive functions coach. And my focus is always on learning ADHD friendly strategies, tools, and systems to make my life a little bit more easier. And I bring those to the podcast to share them with you in the hopes that it invites you to explore what would make your life a little bit more easier. Today, I'm going to be sharing my love of jigsaw puzzles and what I've learned over the years really makes a puzzle one that I just thoroughly enjoy doing versus ones I get frustrated with and don't finish. And I call this one of my um, strategies to be able to finish more consistently. A lot of times with ADHD, we struggle to finish things. We start a lot of things and don't finish many of them. And that was definitely true with me around jigsaw puzzles. I had a tendency to start a lot of them. And I always ended up just kind of putting them away and not finishing them because I lost interest or there was something about it that just wasn't working for me. And I'm going to share the specifics about what I've learned and just invite you to notice if there's anything in what you're trying to do more often because it does bring you joy that if you noticed a part of it that you like, but a part of it that you don't, how you can continue to refine your hobbies and things that you do to create more fun in your life. So they're working better for you. So I'm going to start with my latest puzzle that I was working on. And I'm holding up, if you're um, listening to me, I'm holding up a, a picture um, of, well, it's actually the box of the puzzle that my husband gave to me. Um, it's a Star Wars um, related puzzle. It's uh, I call Baby Yoda, um, Grogu, the child. And I love Grogu. I love Star Wars and I love puzzles. So these are three things that really should make this a puzzle I would thoroughly enjoy, which is why my husband picked it for me. It's also a thousand piece puzzle. And that's one of the things I've noticed. I, I'll, I'll do a 500 piece puzzle, but I love thousand piece puzzles. It's the, just the, the ideal number of pieces for me. I really enjoy a thousand piece puzzle. So it, it checks a lot of boxes. I knew when I looked at it, this would be challenging for me because the picture, the thousand pieces don't have a lot of variation in them. So they're very um, monochromatic and I struggle with that. So if you think about like a snow scene, you know, something that has a lot of the same color, I don't, there's not a lot of interest. There's not a lot of variety there. It's hard for me to differentiate the pieces. I just, it takes me so long to find pieces. I'm not enjoying it. It feels more like work instead of play. And since jigsaw puzzles is one of the things I do for play, I want it to feel like play. But because my husband gave it to me and it does check the other boxes in terms of, you know, what I like typically in a puzzle, I thought, well, let me try it. And here's what I learned after a few hours of putting it together. Um, the, the color uh, lack of variation was definitely a challenge. Like I thought it would, I always start with the border. And so I just, you know, separating the pieces and, and, you know, that was still interesting to me. And then I started putting it all together. And then I hit the challenge that I also knew might be a problem, but I wasn't sure. And that's the brand of puzzle. So this puzzle is from Disney and I've done Disney puzzles before that worked, but they weren't made by Disney. They were manufactured by a different company than Disney. So that's important to me because when I'm doing a thousand piece puzzles, the, the pieces are small. And if it isn't clear to me when I put them together that yes, that's the one puzzle piece that goes with this one puzzle piece and I'm done, it gets really frustrating. And so that's what I learned when I did the border was there were multiple pieces that could fit multiple puzzle pieces. And I had to keep playing with them to figure out, is this the right combination? Does this one go here? Well, it also fits here. And then I'm counting the pieces on each side or across the bottom and the top to see if that makes sense, if they line up. And it was just taking a lot of effort. And what I knew just from doing the border, which took me multiple hours, that, that this isn't going to work for me. And I had to really let it go. And that was hard because my husband gave it to me. So I felt more um, connected to it and more like I really wanted to finish it. But I finally just decided this isn't fun. I'm not enjoying it. And I, I put it back in the box and I'm going to donate it because it, it just isn't bringing me fun and joy, which is the reason I do jigsaw puzzles. 
So I want to just highlight some of the things I shared work for me. So thousand pieces is my ideal. A picture I love, which baby Yoda had. That's another win. Again, multicolored. So having a lot of variation is important to me. And so I'm going to share another puzzle. I've done multiples of this specific type of puzzle for Star Wars. So again, it's Star Wars, which I love. It's a thousand pieces, which I love. It's a picture that I love. And here's the important part. It's multicolored. So I'm holding up this, this picture of Star Wars, and this is based on A New Hope, which I just, I just love all of the scenes of this puzzle. And the part that is now really critical that I know, but a lot of people that buy me puzzles don't always know this. I am particular about the company that makes the puzzle because like I just highlighted the Disney one that I tried, a lot of the pieces fit into a lot of other pieces. And that just gets frustrating over time, especially if the colors are very similar. So I have three puzzle companies, manufacturers of puzzles that I gravitate towards because I've had good experience with them. I finished a lot of their puzzles and I found them really fun and, and satisfying to do. And my number one favorite one is Rappensburger. So this is to me like the gold standard for thousand piece puzzles. They make multiple um, variations and you know you can get 500, 750, like 1500. This one's a 1500 piece puzzle, which I bought because it's a challenge. I've not done a 1500 piece puzzle before. And again, it checks a lot of boxes, a lot of color variations. I like when there's uh, like square sections, I can really easily see, oh, that goes with that window, that goes with that window. Um, every single piece of a Ravensburger puzzle is unique. So no two pieces will go together and fit really snugly. And that makes it really clear if I have the right piece or not. So I'm not spending a lot of time trying it in several pieces that fit just as well as the other and trying to decide, is this one really the one that goes here? It's the one and done. I, when I find the right piece, it fits. If it fits, I'm done. I don't have to worry about it, it goes somewhere else and I have it in the wrong piece because multiple pieces fit that piece. So Ravensburger is my favorite. The next is White Mountain. I'll share a Christmas one. That's White Mountain. Um, again, love the holiday theme. So it checks my thousand pieces. I love the picture. I love the multiple colors. So I can see like, oh, that goes with the fireplace. That's part of the tree. Um, that's part of Santa. And White Mountain has pretty good pieces that fit together. Very rarely do I have any challenges with pieces that don't go well or that fit multiple sections of the puzzle. So White Mountain. And the third is Buffalo. And Buffalo is the brand that makes this Star Wars puzzle. And like I said, I've made multiples of these and they go together pretty well. So I enjoy that brand. So I look for those three brands of puzzle when I'm buying puzzles. And every once in a while, I'll still buy a new brand. So this is an Aquarius puzzle. I've not done this one yet. I'm saving this one for this Christmas. It's a thousand piece puzzle. It's peanuts, which is my absolute favorite thing, especially for holiday um, time. I just love all of the peanuts holiday specials. So this one's very sparkly to me. So it checks all the boxes except the brand of puzzle maker. So I'm not sure if I'm going to love this or not, but it's sparkly enough that I'm willing to try it. And I got it on sale after Christmas. So I'm saving it for this Christmas. And it's sparkly enough to pull me into trying it. The last thing that I do that I want to highlight here, tied to a personal owner's manual, is something I've shared before around expecto patronum journals or visual success journals. So this is mine. Um, I like to capture successes visually and put them in here. And so I just want to share my page. I put this in my, my section of my expected Patronum journal that I call evidence I finish things. And you can even see, I, I put an evidence I can finish what I start. And this was one of the first things I did in this section of my success journal was take pictures of puzzles that I finished because it was so satisfying that I finished them. And I have a lot of them. I have multiple pages of puzzles that I finished and I just take a picture of it and I print it out and I, I put it in my book. That is the last thing I do when I finish a puzzle. And then if I love it enough, I give it to my husband and he frames it for me. And so I have a, just a love of Harry Potter and, and Star Wars. So I frame Star Wars and give them to my kids and Harry Potter. I tend to um, frame and, and I have a section um, 
of wall that I put some of the Harry Potter puzzles that I finished because they, I just love looking at them and they bring me joy. But I always take a picture and put it in my Expecto Patronum journal because remember Expecto Patronum is that Harry Potter spell that when you cast it, it repels Dementors. It, it can only be conjured with positive thoughts. And so this visual success journal is only filled with pictures of things that I feel a sense of satisfaction for having completed them. And puzzles are always something that I feel a wonderful sense of satisfaction when I complete it. And the best way for me to finish them is to start with what I know works for me around puzzles. And that checklist makes it more likely I'm going to be pulled into doing the puzzle and it's gonna keep my focus and keep me um, going back to it until it's finished instead of getting frustrated with it and leaving it sit there for months and months and months and months, just draining my energy. It's pulling me into it and I'm checking it off with a lot of fun, a lot of sparkle while I'm doing it. So that's all I wanted to share in this episode of the ADHD Friendly Podcast around jigsaw puzzles and how I capture what works for me in order to make sure that when I'm doing them, it really is fun and play. Um, if you like this episode, I invite you to, to follow me. Um, or if you are watching this on my YouTube channel, ADHD Friendly Podcast, please subscribe. I'm trying to get 100 subscribers and everyone helps me get closer to that goal. And remember, the best time to start your personal owner's manual was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Until next time, tally ho.